Hello plant friends, my name is Victoria and you're watching Plantastics. Today we're going to be exploring the world of artificial lighting, also known as grow lights. So these grow lights are going to be targeted towards low to medium light plants. These lights aren't going to be for a cactus. These are going to be more for like African violets, some terrariums, something that is low to medium light. So what kind of lights do I use for those types of plants? I use the GE bulbs and I have this one in my hand right now is a BR30 and I also use an A19 and then I also use the Barina under cabinet lights and that's what you're going to see behind me with the exception of this vented one which I'm going to cover in another video where I'm discussing the lights that I use for the medium to high light plants. Um, so I'm going to talk about these. These are super nice. They're super lightweight. They're energy efficient. There's just so many things to love about them. This one has somewhat of a pink hue and then I use my Barinas. I purchased the Barinas in the warm white so I don't have a purple tint around me. So I'll talk about the Barinas first. The Barinas are super easy to install. And what you're going to do is you're going to use a command Velcro and you're just going to press it along and you're going to keep them together and then just press up until it's secure on the underneath of a shelf or whatever it is you're going to want to use. These are very popular because of how effective they are. You're going to see these in people's Ikea cabinets and also in their office setups where they have low light plants. And it's simply because they work. They're really great and you can really depend on them. So the other light that I'm going to show you is the GE BR30 and also the A19. So the BR30 is a little bit larger and all these GE bulbs come in three different sizes and then they also have fluorescent tubes. I'll be discussing the bulbs today and the bulbs come in two different varieties basically. So you can get the flowering and nut ones or you can get the seeds and greens. All the ones that I have are for flowering and that's simply because I like for plants to flower and I have a lot of flowering plants. But regardless of which one you get, like the flowering one, you can still have a lot of new growth on it. So something else that is very important for both of these is the distance. And what do you mean by distance? So whenever you have grow lights, there's an optimal distance to have the light from the plant. And in trial and error, you're going to see that if you have it too far away, the plant's going to be etylated and stretched out and just super limp and wimpy looking. And then if you get it too close, you're going to run the risk of bulb burn or light burn because you can still burn plants with artificial light, which is something that I feel like people should pay uh, more attention to because once you have burnt the leaves, the new leaves will have to come in and replace them. And sometimes you can have burns that are so bad that the leaves fall off. So finding that distance. So behind me, I have these barinas and you can see that they are pretty close to the light. These are a little bit um, less strong than this bulb right here, the BR30. And you can see that the bulbs that I have in, they, you can't even see the plants. Ignore this amaryllis, but they're a good two feet. These bulbs are a good two feet of distance between the bulb and the leaves of the plants. So just keep in mind that something people really don't talk about with grow lights or just artificial or supplemental lights is that those lights are very, they can be very strong and very powerful and they can just overwhelm the plant and burn the leaves. So what are you going to do? So you've got these grow lights now and now you are not wanting to turn them all on and off at the same time. So I use these plugs and there are different ones. So this one's more digital so you can control it from your phone. You can use different apps. I do have a couple of these but I've really gravitated more towards the manual ones. 
In this one, you can just select a time and then you can, depending on the brand, press down what you want to be dark or light. It just really depends on which plug you're using. I prefer these because there are times when our Wi-Fi goes out or our lights flicker and just depending on the plug, sometimes they, or your smart system may be down and they just don't really work as well as these. These are so reliable. I love them so much. I like to use a power strip basically and I have all my grow lights on it so that way this is controlling all of the lights. So how long should you keep your grow lights on for? It honestly depends, which I'm sure everybody loves to hear, but I think that you just really need to experiment. Um, something you can do once you figure out how far or how close you need your lights to be to your plants is that you can start off with mirroring the outside light. So if you're getting six hours of light, maybe you could do eight hours. Maybe you can do six. Just play around with it and see what works for you. The setup that I have behind me stays on for 10 hours since these are kind of like not as strong and then I have some other lights that are a bit stronger and they stay on for 12 hours, but they're way farther away. So they're just basically kind of evenly distributing the strength of that bulb. So this one goes off at 10 p.m. and another one I have goes off at midnight. My plants really get the light that they need. And if you have African violets or peperomias, these are gonna love it so, 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 so much. And as long as the leaves are not touching this or like two or four inches away, depending on the variety, you should be good and you should not burn them. So this one's a bit stronger. And honestly, this one is really great for like alocasias, peace lilies and whatnot. But the same as with the Barina light strips, you really want to keep those lights a good distance away especially with this one because it's a little bit stronger. You want to have a further distance. And even if you're not going to purchase these two brands, you can still look at the back of the box and sometimes it will tell you the distance that they recommend. And some of them will tell you which varieties and whatnot. But I honestly have kind of learned through trial and error because Barina honestly doesn't market itself with these at least. Now they have updated their description. But when I purchased these, they weren't marketed as grow lights. They were marketed as under cabinet lights or shop lights. So I kind of had to learn through trial and error. So I hope that this video was helpful. And if you're really interested, um, come back and I'll be making a video on the medium to highlights because I have a variety of plants and they have a variety of lighting requirements and needs. And that means that I have to have a variety of lights to match that. So be sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.